There's no shot. This would be suicide if conservatives tried to touch. Majority Report Emma was standing Black Cleopatra because Egypt was in a... Dude, Emma's comments there were probably some of the cringiest, the most white person speaking comments I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh God, oh no, oh God! Oh no, oh God! Wait, which continent is Egypt on? Also, it's also cowardly to say this. J.K. Rowling staked at a cowardly position where she said, I didn't say what race Hermione was. J.K. Rowling should have come out and said, Hermione can be any race, it's not really important to her character. That's what she should have said. God <sighs> won't even have a baby. Seven years never happened. And then you're relate in the relate, you're me for a month and I'm pregnant. What does that mean? Well, like, it, now I just think about if like, if you force me to kill the baby, then you're a sin. Well, we already said by having sex, but it's too late now, you know? But honestly- Who's this girl? Um, I mean, he, he's got a point. I can't believe she got owned by the dumbest guy on the planet. Bro, this guy is like clinically, this guy is medically not allowed to drive cars and shit. Like that's how fucking stupid he is. And he just owned her in the marketplace of ideas by being like, well, we already sinned, we fucked. Why is she a bad person? For having sexual intercourse with right. this guy. There, is that, is there more you need to know about? That tells me well, everything. Know about? Give a shit. D debated her yesterday, called her subhuman trash. Yeah, dude, it, in this conversation, I think they're both, okay? I'm looking at her picture and I'm struggling to find the problem. That's so funny. Oh, wow, you mean to tell me destiny was against the woman in that conversation? That's so shocking. <laughs> Wait, what? That's crazy. I mean, I'm not even siding with her, but it is pretty funny. Also, why the fuck do you guys know who Divorcelli is debating every day. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he debated the baby. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> he debated the baby, so the baby <laughs> himself. <laughs> God wants you to have a baby. Seven. Divorcelli. fuck is this? I've seen this before. I don't know what it's called. I don't remember what it's called. It's usually okay. You criticize Hassan for always giving the leftist slash tanky take, but don't you always give the misandrist or misogynist take? Yes, I always do. Famous destiny, hater of women. Um, yeah, this guy is a massive propagandist. Um, I don't, I think he's, I don't want to say evil. I need a name for people that cause harm, but they're not maybe like evil people. But I think that, um, oof. it's also difficult to speak on some of these issues without sounding racist. Um, even if the language is like normal for the region, like when I speak about Arabs as an American, after doing all the Israel Palestine stuff, I, I feel like it's reasonable. Like, oh yeah, these are Arab states. Arabs believe this in general. Or Arab people believe this. But like in the West, when you say Arabs, it just sounds like super racist. Um, but I think that like, I feel like uh, Bassem just has, what is it? How, how do you pronounce it? Is it Bassem Youssef? This guy has like um, what I would call or what, what appears to me to be as like the standard Arab Muslim viewpoint of Israel and Jews, which is Jews around the West. They're pretty evil. Um, Palestinians are largely just victims of Western imperialist Israel. And then all of the, all of the things that follow from that, like the hardcore slanting of everything in favor of, of the Arabs and the hardcore slanting away from, uh, the Israelis or the Jews, even if there's like stuff to be said about both sides. And, um, yeah, he just does that verbatim. I don't know if it's because he's attractive or if it's because he's attractive and very charismatic. He is a he is an incredibly charismatic speaker. Like when you look at him and you listen to him speak, he's captivating. He speaks English very well. He's good word choice and strong diction. And he the the way that he speaks with the combination of like humor and seriousness and how like he is a re, he's really good at that. But um the the content is just garbage. <laughs> it's propaganda trash. Um yeah, his eyes are ridiculous. 
Yeah, I don't know if there's, there must be like some correlation with, um, or I don't know how the genes run together for like eye color and skin color. Cause it feels like black people or darker skinned people almost always have brown eyes, right? Are his eyes blue or are they just really hazel? I can't tell. Do you think it's maybe a publicity stunt for his entertainment career? Um, uh, maybe a little, I don't know. He was an extremely famous comedian in the Middle East before he moved to the US. Oh, did he actually move to the United States? They are green, right? They might be green. I can't, I can't tell. Could you possibly talk to him about Israel-Palestine? If you wanted to, this would be an amazing guest for Bridges. Where's Erudite? I think you should say Middle Eastern Arabs or something. Like people from Indonesia are also Arabs. Is that true? I have no idea. When you get into Asian people that are Indonesians considered Arabs? Indonesia. Ethnic. Javanese. <laughs> Is this a real thing? Am I getting trolled? Maybe he meant Muslim? Austronesian? Okay, stop. We're not going. I'm not. Okay. That's it's like a whole world of shit I have no clue about. Lefties used to hate him. This is a big budget Netflix series on Cleopatra has been hit with claims of cultural vandalism over the casting of black actress Adele James in a lead role. Well, Cleopatra's precise heritage is a point of scholarly debate. There's no evidence that she was black and the casting has caused major controversy in Egypt, spurring a lawsuit and claims the program makers are erasing Egyptian identity. It's not the first casting controversy we've seen, of course, though the backlash is normally the other way around. Brian Cranston was lambasted for playing a disabled character in The Upside, as was Jake Gyllenhaal, who starred in The Prince of Persia despite not being Persian, or a prince. And of course, Eddie Redmayne, who issued a groveling apology for playing a trans woman in The Danish Girl. So is casting Cleopatra as a black woman culturally insensitive? Should we care? Isn't the job of an actor, after all, to act? Well, joining me now is legendary Egyptian comedian Basim Yusef, and also with the case of the cancel culture, Ernest Owens. Well, welcome to both of you. Okay, let me start with you, um, Ernest Owens. Off you go. Yeah, um, I think that this is ridiculous. I think that she um, is in full range to play Cleopatra. I think people should remember that there was controversy when the late, great Elizabeth Taylor played Cleopatra, and people thought that it was inaccurate for a white woman like her to play the character. Um, history has said that there is some racial ambiguity around um, Cleopatra's identity. She's definitely not white. And I think to even assume that Egyptians do not carry some level of African ancestry that can have a darker skin complexion is also historically inaccurate. So I think she's more of the ideal of what Cleopatra would look like more than Elizabeth Taylor would be. And you didn't see as much backlash for Elizabeth Taylor playing okay. Cleopatra yeah, compared that's a, to that. That's a fair point. So let me go to you, Beth. I mean, that is a fair point. Liz, Liz Taylor was the biggest movie star in the world at the time she played Cleopatra. She was not Egyptian. What's the difference? Well, first of all, this was Hollywood before. It there was a guy that I debated. Um, it was a black guy on slavery related stuff a long time ago. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember the exact convo. He said something in the convo that I thought was just super untrue. And it was that America invented the idea of like black and white. Um, and the way that I took that at the time when I listened to it was that like there was no racism before slavery or capitalism or some bullshit. I was like, there's no way. That's not true. Um, and I did more reading. I think this was mainly Austrian uh, afterwards. Uh, and it does seem like, I'm not gonna say racism didn't exist in the world, but it does seem like uh, the United States uniquely uh, had these hardcore black white categorizations and I think it's worth it when you look at other parts of the world to understand that not everybody necessarily looks at things that way. Um, so if you're a white person and you see like a guy from Kenya and Jay-Z and you're like, oh yeah, they're both black. Like in the United States, we might say that, but uh, in, in other parts of the world, the ethnic delineations are a lot finer, um, more gradient, would you say? Uh, it, it's, not, it's not all like the same shit. <laughs> to outside of the United States. Now, where this came about in the US, whether it was because we're, we're kind of like um, an amalgamation of a bunch of different types of people. So like the groups kind of grow. That's why we have like neo-Nazis or whatever, like Nick Fuentes, um, or, or why we've got like open tent far right groups in the US. I don't know. I don't know why exactly it came to be that way in the US, but I, I think it's just worth, I think it's worth keeping that in mind when you're dealing with other cultures around the world. That, only in the United States do you have like these really broad groups of like white and black. That that's a very American centric thing of of viewing race. 
that was informed. This is where 1961, when Cleopatra by Elizabeth Taylor, we're not crazy about Elizabeth Taylor playing Cleopatra either. That was also inaccurate. I don't know where do you get the idea that we're happy that she played the, the role. As a matter of fact, 1961 Cleopatra movie was banned in, 19, in Egypt and many Arab countries because of Elizabeth Taylor's stance towards the, the state of Israel because they supported them. So I don't know where does he kind of get this information. I think it's more of an education and exposure thing. We don't really give a fuck about the world outside of America growing up. Well, there's a few reasons for that. One is America is genuinely a fucking huge place, number one. Number two, we have oceans on both sides of us. Traveling is really hard as an American, right? If you're a European and you've never gone to another country before, what the fuck are you doing with your life, right? But if you're American, traveling to another country is, um, it's like a thousand dollar expenditure at least if you're thinking of like airplane tickets plus hotels plus miss where plus everything else like it's a there's a lot of stuff um going on there so uh, and then and then when you look at the conditions in the countries right in the united states we are a as much as i triggers you guys to say it we are a nation of immigrants we do not have that incredibly strong unifying ethnic background like like maybe we did in the 1700s and early early 1800s maybe uh but we're definitely a, a more smushed together group of people that never really had the kingdoms to draw our ethnic lines down or our kings or conquerors or anything like that um so our, our view of race is going to be a lot different than it's going to be a bit more generalized than people in europe or africa or the middle east or whatever you read about the Tickle v. Giggle lawsuit. <laughs> no, what? How much weight do you think the Palestinian polls showing support for Hamas and October 7th attacks should have? Um, I used to give them a lot of weight. Now I give them like, I think it's good to just get like a snapshot of where people are at. I think it's actually, I think it's very apt to say that's putting your thumb on the pulse of the Palestinian people. Although I guess actually it's not used that way because usually if you have your thumb on the pulse of something in a metaphorical way, that means you have a really good understanding of what people are thinking. But I think a pul pulse doesn't really give you a good understanding of anything. It's like a snapshot of like, where's somebody at immediately right now? And like, what information can we gather from this right now? But that information can change pretty quickly. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard. It's hard to go by a poll and, and to, to get like a comprehensive view of what somebody believes. It doesn't give you everything. It's just a snapshot of a particular opinion phrase in a certain way at a particular point in time. It's not worthless, but it's, yeah, just it's uh, keep in mind the limited utility of it. Have you seen conservative infighting about Trump's abortion statements? <sighs> Is Trump coming out as like kind of lukewarm or pro-choice-ish? Trump statements, abortion. Oh my God, is he actually? Trump says abortion legislation should be left to states. <laughs> that's gonna be the, that's the center, that's gonna be the center left position now. Did you edge in the mic? Why does it sound so muddy? You literally have the same headphones as me. Can you not hear it? This sounds muddy? I don't think this sounds muddy at all. Um, but thank you for including a specific criticism when you brought up the audio, congratulations. <laughs> I think that um, on, the, on the conservative side of things, abortion, I think, is a really scary issue because I think that, uh, a, what does muddy mean? Muddy means lots of warm, it's going to mean a lot of warm sounds that are going to be in the male speaking range and not a lot of distinct highs that give you like a, um, that give you a, I use these words, I don't know if they mean anything, like colder, but crisper and clearer, distinct sounds in the highs. If you're thinking like cold, crisp, you're thinking of like the hit of like a snare drum, like with the snares on, you're thinking of like a, a hi-hat. These are like your warm sounds. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. Those are like your yellow. Those are your uh, crisp. They could be tinny, depending on how hollowed out your mids are. I'm just like, using fucking, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, if you know, you know. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that guy was right. You think this, you think my mic is too warm? Testing, testing, one, two. Abortion is a really scary issue for uh, Republicans because I think abortion is one of those issues that will energize the f out of the enemy base and get them to vote. That is like a really strong social issue that's gonna drive, I think, a lot of people to, to polls. You're so wrong, money's the opposite of crisp. That's what I just said. But it's more desaturated sounds, harder to distinguish low contrast i think it's harder to distinguish because on the low end of the spectrum it's hard to separate out the sounds because of how 
Ugh. Is this making sense? Because of how the overtone series works and because of how rich all of the harmonic information is down there. If I play a C chord up top, wait, does this work anymore? Oh, it's just quiet. You can hear this, right? Oh, here we go. Oh, too loud. You can hear this. You can hear this perfectly well. Because you're, you're very, very, very high. Uh, there's less like harmonic information physically, I think, right? In these waves, or at the very least, they, they fall off where the humans can hear. But if you play this same C chord way down here, it's very, very, very hard to distinguish everything. And it sounds fucking horrible. These are the same notes. That's why people will voice things differently. So instead of like this, you might have like this. Or maybe this, maybe. We're very low on the keyboard there. But even as opposed to this, you might have. My guess is gonna be stuff in lower, stuff in lower ranges, um, there's just too much harmonic information loaded on top and it all just becomes jumbled and fucking horrible. There's no shot. This would be suicide if conservatives tried to touch a nationwide abortion limit. It would be crazy. Why would you ever even talk about this? Even if you were, even if you were a, a uh, an anti-abortion conservative, you should shut the fuck up. You should never talk about this. Oh my God. This is like election throwing sh stuff to be talking about. That's like saying like, we're going to get rid of gay marriage. <laughs> we're going to go out like, why this is like one of the most energized issues you could possibly throw at the, um, at the opponent's political support base. Why would you ever do this? What do you think of the accusations against the U.S. meddling in Israel's politics? I mean, meddling how? We apply pressure to them, sure. But Israelis and Jewish people apply pressure. I mean, everybody pressures their friends to do shit, right? Do you think abortion will be a top five issue come election time? It, it isn't at the moment. I was really surprised when I was in, um, I don't remember where I travel anymore. Fuck, I've gone to so many places. Um, Ohio? Is that, that's where we went canvassing, right? Uh, and I, we did the door knocking stuff. Basically, every single door that I knocked on was um, the when, when you asked the people because you were trying to ask like, what are your big, um, what are the things you care about the most for the election? It was the defense of democracy, which sounds like a Twitter answer, and then it was abortion. Um, Abolition of slavery was not made by being half anti-slavery. You were totally against it to get rid of it. Same with abortion issue. Is that true? One hundred percent. Didn't we have? Didn't we kind of transition out of slavery with like? Um, I don't remember how these things worked. Didn't you have some bullshit called sharecropping for a while, which was basically like, listen, if you work as a, as a kind of slave for like twenty years, I'll give you some land and you can fuck off. It, it was. Am I making this up? I don't remember this. The legal arrangement in which a landowner allows a tenant to use. The land in return for a share of the crops produced on that land. Share has a long history. Didn't, weren't you able to break out of being a slave? Or am I thinking of just like indentured servitude, servitude or some bullshit? I might be thinking of that. Your audio is cutting out for very quick blips. Easy to hear it if you hold a long chord on the piano and listen for it to cut out. Even the ambient noise is cutting, so it's not clipping. Really? That's indentured servitude. Like, okay, never mind. I'm thinking of indentured servitude, maybe. Noise is cutting, so it's not clipping. Really? I don't hear it at all. It only happens if you play the deeper notes. He's not lying.
I don't hear it at all. Okay. I don't hear this. This is your shit, Doug. He's essentially taking the moderate Republican stance on abortion. Maybe he saw DeSantis fail and shifted on it. The moderate stance should be you leave it up to the states. That that jives. Um, <laughs> why am I even bothered to say this? I was going to say that it, it jives principally with being a conservative, but the conservatives of today are, are completely transformed from the conservatives of 10 years ago. So I don't even know if that matters anymore. But I mean, theoretically, it's, it, that should be more in line with conservative values. Um, let me finish watching this. Sorry. Second of all, this is the same Hollywood that in 1956 they cast John Wayne at Junkie's Khan. So this is a. Um, what do you think are going to be the three main factors that will determine the upcoming elections? I think abortion will still be a big one. I think it'll be the economy, and I think it'll be Trump, and just his the feelings of Trump in general. I think. Time where Hollywood didn't know any better. Now the problem for me is not about color. It's not about white and black. This is a very reductive way to talk about things. This is the way that Americans talk about it. I'm very sorry. Like I come from Egypt. Egypt has a very diverse color palette. People can look like me or they can look deeper skin tone, like Anwar Sadat, who comes from a Nubian origin. It's not about black and white. It's about the continuous cultural falsi uh, appropriation and falsification of history that has been done by what the so-called Afrocentrist movement. That what song were you just playing? I don't know. There's some. It's from one of the old boring composers. <sighs> I think Mozart. There's a, there's a name for this eight, or is it an early Chopin piece? I don't know, but I mean, it's, these are like really common chords. Fuck, I don't, I don't know the piece. I just, I've heard this, I've heard this pattern before. Oh, is it Bach, Mozart, cello? Why did I just say cello? <laughs> That's box well-tempered clavier. What do you think about the faces some musicians make when playing music? Um, I, I think it's normally genuine. Sometimes I wonder. It's like the tennis player thing. It's empire of Mali. But the thing is, that's why you find people like Kevin Hart. Do you think that the pro-Palestinians that claim Biden is complicit in genocide will vote the negative of that in Trump? Uh, I don't think that voting voice matters much, but we'll see of Ghana, um, of uh, Sungali, uh, the great empire of Mali. But the thing is, that's why you find people like Kevin Hart, who subscribes to these theories, who claim that his ancestors play, uh, build the pyramids. I'm sorry, your ancestors had their own wonderful civilization in West Africa. They are culture appropriating my culture, calling the people of <laughs> Egypt of today, despite the way um, of uh, Sungali that has been done by what the so-called Afrocentrist movement. The Afrocentric movement started the last century as a way in a good intention to teach African American about their rich history of West Africa, the great empire of Benin, of Ghana, um, of uh, Sungali, uh, the great empire of Mali. But the thing is, that's why you find people like Kevin Hart who subscribes to these theories who claim that his ancestors play uh, build the pyramids. I'm sorry, your ancestors had their own wonderful civilization in West. Hold on, I think we got to separate a lot out here. Um, when we say Afrocentrism, how different is this from like Hotep shit? Um, I, don't, I don't know enough about this. I do know though that some people that when people fixate, Egypt is a really big uh, selling point I think for Hotep's that the idea that like the, all the people in Egypt were black, it was all brothers, all brothers in Egypt. Um, and they controlled and they built everything. And it's part of, I think it, it's part of this group of black people who try to take back black identity in the United States by claiming that, well, actually, you know, we're the descendants of kings. We come from the people that built the pyramids and ruled Egypt and blah, blah, blah. Although I'm pretty sure that take is almost entirely ahistorical. But I don't know if that's all of Afrocentrism or if that's just like a small subset of Afrocentrism and Afrocentrism just tries to teach people in general or, or like focus a bit on like some African history. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure. Even if I read the wiki on this, I don't know like in common parlance what that's going to refer to. It's similar. Afrocentrism, Afrocentrism doesn't necessarily need to lead into Hotep shit, but it often does. Okay. Why would Jewish voters sit by and watch as Biden destroys and uproots his entire support slash security system for Israel in an attempt to bend over backwards to kowtow to Michigan Arabs that chant death to America? And Israel just wants, he wants their votes in the election. He wants their votes that he won't get mine. Okay. Ian Cannon says it was browser related on his end. Way to go, loser. 
West Africa. They are culturally appropriating my culture, calling the people of Egypt of today, despite their skin tone, that they call us as invaders, they, we call, okay, they call me, us as right. intruders, and, and, and they are being erased by, from our own history. Okay, this is something that Hollywood has done over I, the years. I understand, but right. let me throw this back at you. There's this point that we've had so many cases now where people talk about appropriation with actors, be it their sexuality, be it their gender on occasion, be it whatever it may be. Um, and ultimately, I always come back to one point, which is shouldn't actors do what their job description is, act? I mean, shouldn't any actor be able to play any part, actually? And once you start making exceptions for that rule, where do you stop? Is, is that a question for me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, this is not a work of fiction. This is a document. That's where you get the, uh, what were the memes? People were making, where are like the stupid posters? <laughs> it's like Leonardo DiCaprio now playing Martin Luther King or whatever. I don't think, I don't think you can completely entirely, or is it Ryan Gosling? <laughs> I don't think you can completely and totally divorce what the actor looks like and who they are from the role that they play. I don't think, like, I don't think this is ever working, ever. I don't think you're ever getting away with this. <laughs> like, I don't think this is ever going to work. Documentary. This is a documentary. This is a huge difference. This is not The Little Mermaid, which is like a fictional character where you can, anybody can play anything. The, uh, uh, Cleopatra which came from a Macedonian Greek origin. And the thing is, it's not about like the skin color. As I don't, we don't care about if they're black or white. It's about, it's about how Hollywood is so culturally sensitive and they're so sensitive about all kinds of, of minorities. But when it comes to my people, we seem to be erased. A couple of years ago, they announced that Gal Gadot, an ex-Israeli soldier who condones her government actions and atrocities against uh, Palestinian children. One of the biggest faults of like progressives or people in the, in the United States, I'm not even gonna say in the West, the problem with people in the United States, and you see this a lot with the way that we talk about people, even just saying black people is a hilarious reductionist term, right? Because African immigrants and African Americans are entirely different groups of people. Um, the way that we view race in the West, especially from the minority lens of like, you've got white and then you've got everybody else, that lumping of everybody else together is such a comically American idea. Um, and, and, and even the minorities started to see some issues with it, which is why you get stuff like BIPOC, which is still missing the point completely. Um, but yeah, our, our ugh. The, the, the view that we have of, I think, race in the West, in some ways it's like, in some ways it's a lot more elevated than how they view it in Europe. And in other ways it's a lot more childish than how they view it, I guess, yeah, I don't know. She was going to play Cleopatra. For me, this is even a bigger insult. And Gal Gadot is not black. It's not about black and white. It's about this idea of, of Hollywood always stealing the culture of my own people. I don't care what Charleston Histon tells you in the Ten Commandments or Steven Spielberg tells you in The Prince of Egypt, but I'm sorry, Jewish slaves did not build the Great Pyramid. This has been debunked many times by okay. historians. Let me so I think it's like, wanna, the only people- How is it elevated? Uh, I'm going completely anecdotally here. But I think in the United States in general, I think that we're better about having different types of people here, treating people better just because, you know, um, not based necessarily on the way that they look. I think in, as a general rule of thumb, especially in cities, I think we're better at having lots of people travel here and being treated as human and like ordinary people and calling out things like microaggressions or kind of like overt racist actions. I think we do that better in the United States than I think happens in a lot of even Western Europe. I think we're, I think we, we do that better than them. Um, but then we have like a lot of weird shit that goes off in the other direction. This is all anecdote based on people that I've heard that travel the world and shit as different races of people and in the comments I've read and stuff. Maybe that's not 100% true, but uh, that, that, I'm being honest, it's just anecdotal. That's what I've heard. I'm sorry, Jewish slaves did not build the Great Pyramid. This has been debunked many times by okay. historians. Let me so I think it's like, the only on. people, sorry, Jew? Jewish slaves did not no. build the Great Pyramid. This has been debunked many times by- okay. My understanding is that even though Jews were in the Torah in Egypt, uh, I don't believe there is any evidence ever. There's never been any piece of, any shred of evidence that Jews were in Egypt, historically. Uh, so the idea that Egypt had a ton of Jewish slaves, there's not been a single shred of archaeological evidence to ever support that. That's purely, I believe, a, a biblical story from Christians and um, Jews, I guess. But I, I don't think there's any historical evidence to support that. I say that a lot, actually. Let's look it up real quick. Historical evidence. Jews in Egypt. Wait, hold on. When were the pyramids built? 3,200 BC. God damn. Jesus. That's a long f time ago. <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay. Also, everybody in chat is saying slaves. I think that that's an outdated understanding as well. I think that 
most of the pyramids were built by like workers and contractors and, and like edu not educated, but like working people as well. I don't think it was generally, um, I don't think it was generally understood to be slaves that did it. I feel like that understanding has changed recently. History of Jewish slaves in Egypt. Why does history not have a place for African Americans whose past were erased? Um, because that's part of erasing your past is you don't have a history. <laughs> that's, I'm sorry, that's shitty, but um, yeah, that's a it's a rough one. Also, I'm not a good person to ask about that because I think I think all ethnic pasts are cringe as f um, but I say the same to Nazis as well. But I, I'm, it's hard. I don't have very much empathy there, so I can only do like I have to intellectualize compassion really hard. I think that black people in the United States are, as a group, in terms of what they've accomplished, in terms of contributions to the world, I think are actually really amazing. But if you're trying to go back to like African kingdoms and shit, I don't know. I think that things like jazz and rap and hip hop and the culture that's come out of black communities and that being like one of the prevailing dominant like popular cultures around the world is a pretty interesting thing considering that you have like a group of people whose history were erased, who were subjugated to chattel slavery, like slavery such that not only are you a slave forever, your fucking kids are slaves forever, which was relatively unique, I believe, um, even on the world stage, that that group of people were still able to create a culture combining other cultures and then combining parts of their own into making stuff that is like the, the predominant culture in the world in terms of like music and entertainment. That's really interesting to me. That would be, I think that's something to be proud of. But um, uh, yeah, I guess if you want to be proud of like your African kingdoms and shit, I don't know, maybe, I guess, I don't know. Seems like those kind of sucked. <laughs> Same thing with Native American kingdoms though. Is the black person playing Cleopatra a little weird because it plays into the Hotep narrative? Well, my, I could be wrong, but I think that was the, I think that was the issue was, I don't think that they just played Cleopatra with a black person. There was like a whole social narrative and shit around it. And I think that's why people were getting upset, which I think is fair. At least that's what I remember at the time, but maybe my memory is flawed or maybe I was only looking at anti SJW stuff or something. I believe that the Dead Sea Scrolls that were restored from the Dead Sea show proof of the Jews being slaves in Egypt. I don't know what the scrolls would prove. I'm thinking like archaeological shit. Well, scrolls, I guess, if there's writings from. The Netflix trailer literally had a lady going, my mom told me, I don't care what they say, Cleopatra was black. Oh, okay, well, yeah, I mean, then that would do it. They turned it, if you're going to turn something very political, then it's going to be very political and people will... Destiny. Chattel slavery was the norm. Chattel slavery with zero exceptions was not common. Most cultures, it was up to the father if he was free to free. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, chattel slavery where even your descendants were all permanent slaves with absolutely no path out of slavery. I think that was relatively unique. I don't even know. Was there chattel slavery in Europe? That might have been almost, almost only America. I don't remember if they did that in Europe or not, but... There might have been other countries that did it a little bit, but I think I think the United States was the easily like the largest purveyor of person who sells or deals in particular goods. No. The largest uh, utilizer of, I think, um, chattel slavery, I believe. In a lot of places, like the Arabs all castrated their slaves. Yeah, but that by definition isn't what we're talking about, right? If you're castrated, then all of your children can't become slaves because you don't have children. Oh, and then also, oh, here you go. There's a consensus among Egypt, Egyptologists, is there an Americanologist? <laughs> that the Great Pyramids were not built by slaves. According to noted archaeologists Mark Lenner and Zahi Hawass, the pyramids were not built by slaves. Hawass's archaeological discoveries in the 1990s in Cairo show the workers were paid laborers rather than slaves. Rather, it was farmers who built the pyramids during flooding when they could not work their lands. There you go. Bassem is also seen by a good portion of Arabs and Egyptians as a propagandist for the Egyptian government during the coup, um, especially after making a song about the Rabah massacre. I don't even know what the Rabah massacre was. Um, after the coup in like 2012, is that what we're talking about? Or, hey, Dustin, I've been a fan for a while and I really enjoy your content. Do you think that Sneeko is gonna ride the Islam train for the rest of his life? Do you think he's gonna attempt to get off it? Um, right now, Islam has kind of got like a little popular surge among young people on Twitter, especially coming from Red Pill Spaces. It'll fade after a while.
feel like I just need to do some research on slavery in the new world because I feel like this is something that the vast majority of people are wholly uneducated on. The current situation in Haiti, for instance, could be seen as a direct consequence of the horrible system of slavery that the French practice there. Bro, Haiti is f I don't actually know how f it is. I just know I was watching a lot of death videos. God damn. There is some cartel shit going on down there. What the f Okay, anyway, the first video. We are the only people who are not allowed to, 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 to talk about our own history. Right, let me bring, all right, let, let, me, okay. add this hang on, hang on, Ernest, let me ask you a question, Ernest, which is sure. how would you feel if a white actor was chosen to play Nelson Mandela? I think that there is historical oh, inaccuracies there. I think that, Hold on one you know, I think what he... Do you want to see the eclipse? Um, not really. Where, where is it? It's outside. Outside where the sun is? Where is the sun? That's my question. Up in the sky? Oh, well, then I'll be able to see it from here, because I can see it's the sky from here. Thank you. You're washed up. You used to be way more come on, brah, back in the days. I don't even know what that means, but okay. Come on, brah. He's confusing his race and nationality, and I also think that that is why you don't see as many black actors upset as Cynthia Revo, who is British, who played, you know, Harriet, because we understand the nuances of racial identity compared to nationality versus um, the identity of the African dis the diaspora. So no one's upset about the fact that David Onyalu played MLK. Um are you still in favor of deplatforming people that intentionally spread misinformation? No, that was like an old, that was like a 2018 belief, I think. Okay, historians. Let me so I think it's like, we are the only people who are not allowed to tell our own, we are the only people who are not allowed to talk about our own history. Oh, let me bring, all right, let, let me, us. okay. I, I disagree. Majority on. report Emma was standing black Cleopatra because Egypt was an, dude, Emma's comments there were probably some of the cringiest, the most white, person speaking comments I've ever heard in my entire life. I don't think I could, I don't think I could be seen publicly in an area with Emma where there's like even a chance that an actual black person shows up. That was some of the cringiest fucking shit. Oh my God. Oh my God. I think even, I think even the majority report audience Oh fuck, did they delete? Destiny destroy Sam Cedar and Emma Vigland. The debate. Wait, who linked this? Why the fuck did you link this? Hold on, you're getting a- Damn, look at this editing. August, you're in trouble. Post from there. Oh, I thought this said 21 hours. Wait, who linked this? Why the fuck did you link this? Can you explain why Biden thinks it's okay to threaten and condition aid to America's longest ally and only democracy in the Middle East just because an accident in war happened with the WCF? Explain how that's logical. Well, if you are an Israeli person or if you're a Jew and you studied history, especially of your own country, you would know exactly how that's possible. It's because in a democracy, you have to win the votes of your people. If your country is doing things that are threatening our leaders and their ability to maintain office, you're going to lose support in your country. That is something that every democracy around the world, Israel historically, has always had to uh, struggle with, is that when you're losing popular support amongst your people, you have to redirect your policy accordingly. So if in Israel, you guys are conducting warfare and such a way that you're not satisfying the international or public or at least the U.S.'s desire to see that you're striking people responsibly or if mistakes are happening that they're absolutely unavoidable and you're failing to do that, then of course you're going to start to lose aid or support from a democratic country because there's there, it, it, that's it's always going to happen that way. Yeah. Destiny, so you meant that Biden is only doing this to cuck to Muslim voters in Michigan, not because it's the right or logical thing to do. Politicians in a democracy are not supposed to do the right or logical thing, okay? Conceptually, a democracy is supposed to be the expressed will of the people of a country. It's not technically supposed to be up for a politician to decide what that will should be. The politician's goal is to act enact the will of the people. So if the will of the people changes because of whatever reason, then the job of the politician is to reflect that change in will, not to buck it or to fight against it. If he does fight against it in a, in a democratically elected society, if the leaders do fight against the public, then they lose. And then you get another leader in who will do what they want. That's how democracy works. So you agree that conditioning aid to Israel is not the right thing to do? Personally, from like a moral or like, do I agree with it? I mean, it should always be conditioned. I don't necessarily know if like the recent strike on the aid fans is like something that's like so horrendously beyond the pale and blah, blah, blah. I mean, like obviously it was a horrible, tragic event. I don't think Israel is intentionally killing aid workers like some seem to say, but that doesn't matter. You have to keep in mind that at the end of the day, you have to recognize that your democracy, the Americans uh, have a democracy and we're going to act democratically. And if you do things that cause you to lose support from your allies, uh, the population, 
relations of those allies in a democratic elected country, you're going to lose support. That's the reality of how politics works. Jews used to understand this. You used to know this a long time ago, okay? You should learn it again. Yes. The accusation I was talking about say that the White House is involved with the left protest leaders in Israel. Okay, I'll click this later. We haven't even gotten to our first clip of the day yet, okay? Do you think that Muslim voters in Dearborn and Hamtrak are going to abstain from voting or vote Republican? I don't know. I haven't even seen the breakdown of the numbers and the ages and everything yet. So you are against the FDR, you're against FDR supporting the allies before the people wanted it? I mean, in a democracy, yeah, you have to follow the will of the people or you lose elections. That's it. That's how it goes. You can, I mean, to be fair, you have a little bit of pushback on them. Like leaders can lead as well, but mostly you're going to be held captive by whatever the window is of, of how your public wants you to act. Yeah, that's a democracy. That's how it works. This. Hold on. You're getting a ban. I just want to see your comments. Choices of Netflix. Oh, and... Do you think that he even really cares? Like, I think that there's a level of Ben Shapiro who says, like, I have to do this for the audience. But, 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 and I, I, I kind of resent that. Wasn't this a video where it was just Emma talking alone to the camera? Am I crazy? Or was she talking to Sam? There's no way Sam sat through her saying something so fucking stupid, right? Ben Shapiro melts down over black Cleopatra. Ben Shapiro ever left the country? He did? It's just amazing to me. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh no! Oh god! Oh, it's this! Oh no, it's this! I can feel it! Oh god, I can feel it! She's gonna say it! Oh no! I can feel it coming. It's down over Black Cleopatra. Ben Shapiro ever left the country? It's just amazing to me. Here's Ben Shapiro. It's like the. I, I just. I don't even know how, like, these people... Wait, I can't tell if Tiny's baiting or if, or is this just partisan hours? Partisan towards what? Wake up in the morning, and I, I, I just... Here's Ben Shapiro. He's upset about... That Reddit post from there. Oh, I thought this said 21 hours. Wait, who linked this? Why the f*** did you link this? Hold on, you're getting a ban. Wow. Where's the freedom of speech? Ugh. Where, just let me find this goddamn clip. Has Ben Shapiro ever left the country? Shriek. It's just amazing to me. Here's Ben Shapiro. It's like the. I, I, oh, this was this is on the Majority Report channel, and even their comments are. I've never seen people say stuff so unbelievably wrong with such confidence. <laughs> it's oh my god. Just I don't. It's funny how the radical far left wing of the Democrat Party used to scream condition aid to Israel, and now it's literally the mainstream position of the Democratic Party. What changed? What do you mean? What changed, dog? Public perception. You know how, like, these people wake up in the morning, and I, I, I just, it, here's Ben Shapiro, he's upset about the casting choices of Netflix. Oh, and... Do you think that he even really cares? Like, I think that there's a level of Ben Shapiro who says, like, I have to do this for the audience. It's... Just show it to me in the transcript. Oh my God. Why are you doing this? What? But, about, but, and I, I, I kind of resent this. About, about Cleo, about someone playing. Well, of all people, I mean, yeah. it's like. <laughs> this is for the base. So he, got, so he has to work himself into this. He thinks he's above it, but this is, this is who your audience is. Yes, and what's, what is stunning about this too is like how dry must the well be <laughs> to be complaining about what he's about to complain about in terms of like the racist well that they, uh, they, they, they're, they're swimming in. The notion that Cleopatra was black is, is silly. Again, you're allowed to do this in Hollywood because, of course, the only thing that matters is our weird, parochially American perception of what race matters. It's super, super strange. By the way, we actually have sculptures of Cleopatra. It's not as though there, there's like nothing to indicate what Cleopatra looked like. There's a Roman sculpture of Cleopatra in like the mid first century. First of all, it's the left that's being parochial, not the guy that can't go on a map and see wh which continent is Egypt on. Oh my God. Oh. I can't hear that again. Oh, that's the one. That's the one hit I can take today for you guys. Oh, fuck. oh God. Oh, why did you say that? <laughs> oh, God. 
Uh, uh. I'm not. I'm not wearing the glasses. I have to stare at the sun. <laughs> Full on. Oh God. I'm a bit confused, maybe too white, but what did she say that was wrong? Basically what she's saying is that if I go anywhere in the continent of Africa, it should look like basically the backdrop to a rap music video that all over Africa, it's all just like the black people that I know and love. It's just black people. It's just all black African-American looking black, black people everywhere. It's just like the, um, Egyptians and and e Egyptians don't if you, like if you saw Bassem, I don't know if we would we don't we wouldn't call him black in the United States, right? Egyptians there might have been black people historically in Egypt, but generally I don't think Egyptians are considered black. And if you were to go to Egypt right now, you wouldn't consider them black even as Americans. It's just it's an incredibly f cringe thing to say. It's just an incredibly f cringe thing to say about Egypt. Ben. Yeah, I don't I don't even know. I'm not actually sure if any of North Africa. Like if I were to look at pictures of if I were to google like um like Libyans or um or like the people of Tunisia or Morocco, are any of these people going to be black? I don't know if you go further west, I'm not sure. Um But like the idea that you would just look at The idea that you would just like, oh, it's in Africa, so obviously it's going to be an African American looking person. I that can't go on a map and see wh which continent is Egypt on. Ben, facts over feeling. Ben Shapiro doesn't understand that. It's like in the north of yeah, Africa. Good job, Bradley. <laughs> um, he doesn't seem to understand that. <sighs> like, I think I have an excuse. Okay, I mean, I can't. I really, I really can't use excuse anymore. But I was just saying, like, I have an excuse. Like, my background is like, I'm like a gamer boy okay so i there's a lot of shit that i don't know because that was my background i just do games and now i kind of do politics but i mean i've been doing it for eight years so maybe i can't use that excuse somewhere but like oh god why would you even venture into this world and make comments this strong uh you know his own fanciful notions of what cleopatra looked like maybe he saw elizabeth taylor at one point play her but that's informed by your culture that's informed by what you were fed as a child as opposed to the geographic location of where she's literally from the i mean the and by geographic location, she means the continent of Africa. I think which is like the size of like 10 United States or something. Um, square footage of African continent. Square footage of USA. I know there's that fucking website. About 9 million versus 30 million. Okay, it's so like four or five. Why is Emma so dumb? It's not, this is just like, again, this is like, actually, I'm glad we watch this. This is like the encapsulation of the progressive brain rot um, that like it's all minorities versus white people, basically. You used to fight gamers that were saying that race swapping characters were going too far. You said once they start race swapping historical characters, then you will take them seriously. Do you take them seriously now? Those people, no, those people are usually racist and losers and fat. <laughs> no, I don't take them seriously, but this was cringe. Also, also, hold on, to be clear, I don't necessarily even think that race swapping is necessarily bad. I think it just depends a lot on what you're trying to show. If you're making something and you're calling it like a mini doc or a docu-series or a documentary, racial stuff is going to be a lot more important. Or if you're making like a biopic or if you're doing something and you're claiming a high level of historical accuracy, uh, then we're going to be a little bit more critical. But if you're... Um, but, but if you're not, if it's just like just for entertainment or something like that, then I don't know who the f cares. It just depends, right? Like if we go if we go crazy over to the other end of the spectrum, obviously we're not talking about any type of historical anything at all, and it's literally fantasy or whatever. But like if you think of Afro Samurai, um, I don't think anybody watched this and was like, really? Black Samurai? Seriously? No. But like nobody's thinking that, because this is just like a fun, it's an anime, it's, I think it's like a six episode anime. OVA, would you call it? I don't know. Just like fun and yeah, crazy and violent or whatever, right? I think it just depends on, it depends on how you're selling what it is you're, you're, you're trying to show to people, I guess, yeah. Like when Jake, when the Harry Potter plays were starting or there was like a Broadway musical, if there was some bullshit um, for Harry Potter, 
and they wanted to make Hermione black. I don't think there's any problem at all with that. Who cares? They're gonna make her black. But what was cringe about it was when, J see, also, it's also cowardly to say this. J.K. Rowling staked at a cowardly position where she said, I didn't say what race Hermione was. J.K. Rowling should have come out and said, Hermione can be any race. It's not really important to her character. That's what she should have said. Same thing with the gay shit and, and uh, Dumbledore. Like, come out and like say or demonstrate exactly what it is. Don't like do this pussy ass, like walk around bullshit. Destiny, look up the Tureg tribe and the Zaneti tribe. These are black North Africans. I'm not saying that there aren't black, I'm not saying that there aren't like black, black people in North Africa. I'm just saying that Africa is a really big continent with a lot of, with different types of people on it. And to say that you see one type and you instantly know like what they look like, even from a skin color perspective, that's not true. But also if you've ever interacted with Africans, um, like African immigrants in the US, you also see big differences of them as well. Um, I think like, I don't want to generalize now because I'm going to be wrong. I knew more when I worked at the casino because we actually had a decent African population. Is it one, there's some African ethnicity where these people look like fucking gods. I don't know how to explain it, but they have like perfect features, clear skin, probably like the less exaggerated features of, of some types of African ethnicities. They borrow from like a lot of different, does anybody know? I want to say Kenyan, but I don't think it's Kenyan. What am I thinking of? Does anybody, or not? What am I thinking of? Does anybody know what I'm thinking of? Is it Nigerian? Sudan, Sudanese, it might be Nigerian. Or actually, it might have just been a really pretty girl that worked at the casino, actually, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. Oh, actually, it might have been Nigerian. But no, but now I'm just gonna get like models and shit. But anyway, I don't wanna, we're not getting to the aesthetic racial competition. I'm just saying that Africa's a big place. Be, just be careful when you generalize, okay? Are they darker skin or fairer skin? Uh, darker skin for the people that I'm thinking of. There are like dozens of ethnicities in Nigeria. You know, probably throughout, throughout a lot of these countries. They're also big. These countries also have a lot of fucking people too. Yeah. Oh, Ernest, let me ask you a question, Ernest. Which is sure. how would you feel if a white actor was chosen to play Nelson Mandela? I think that there is historical inaccuracies there. I think that, you know, I think what he's confusing is race and nationality. And I also think that that is why- Ooh, what? You don't see as many black actors upset as Cynthia Revo, who is British, who played, you know, Harriet, because we understand the nuances of racial identity compared to nationality versus um, the identity of the African- I don't even know what he's, Harriet Tubman? Is, are they referring to another biopic or other movie? I have no idea what these references were. This, the diaspora. So no one's upset about the fact that David Onyalu- you're completely right. Africa is extremely diverse. However, whether you look at Kenyans, Nigerians, Sudanese, everyone would consider them black. I would be really careful on the everyone thing. In America, we absolutely would. But if you go to any of these places as an African-American, if you go to these countries, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb and you're going to be treated like you're from the West. You're going to be treated completely differently. Um, they're not going to just see you as like, oh, a fellow black person. Uh, I don't know in Europe how much you guys divide along all the black identities or whatever. I'm not as sure about that because I, I just... I haven't thought about it as much, but or I haven't seen it as much. I haven't seen any. There are no black people in Europe. No, there are. I'm sorry. It just depends on where you go. God damn. There's like no black people in Sweden. There were a few of them in London. Like 17. There are more in London. I just didn't see them, I guess. They hide from me. I mean, they are there in France. I don't know if I've ever been to like Paris before. I've only been to like Nice and shit. And there are like no. Um, I didn't see any down there. Yeah, I feel like I see more Arabs in, in like uh, in London than I saw black people. I think. Do you speak fluent Spanish? Yes, but only off stream. Played M O K. Um, there may be some people, but others didn't because we understood the nuance of racial identity. So when we're talking about race and nationality, those are two different things. But I think the issue that that I want to push back on what he said earlier is that there are other actors in this film that are playing Egyptians that do not look like Cleopatra or come from there. And I just feel like the energy being focused on Cleopatra is why some people are pushing back because this actress could easily look by identity looks closer to what Cleopatra could look like. But the rest of that cast is fairly white, and you're not saying anything about those individuals. You're only focused on Cleopatra, who's being played by this black black actress. But when you look at the other cast, I don't think they're all Egyptian. I don't think they all represent the cast. All right, let me, so all right, let me bring in. Yeah, but it's also where you direct the focus to as well, right? Like, I mean, that's I think that's why people were mad. Okay, let me bring back Basso. I mean, if this was in a theater production, 
I could imagine this happening it's without all... people creating much of a fuss. Is it because it's a Hollywood movie and Hollywood's put itself in the vanguard no, of it's a, cultural it's appropriation? About, it, it, it's a documentary. Hollywood has been erasing my people from a ten, We are not allowed to tell our own history. And I'm sorry, I have to disagree with the gentleman. It's not about... It's, it, every, it's not just Cleopatra. Everybody in that movie, her court, everybody who's supposed to be Egyptian, they look... Egypt is complex because historically that region has been mixed with many ethnicities from being conquered by other nations at the time. Yeah, sure. It, it's two things. It's three things. One is historic... It, it's it, historically things change, right? The world didn't look the same 5,000 years ago as it looks today. So you've got the history part. Then two, you've got the mixture of different ethnic people there. And then three, you've got the American syndrome where we kind of just see what's going on in our own country. You don't really know much outside of that, both in time and uh, geographic place. So yeah, there's a lot of confusion over here about it. Look like they came from West Africa, from the south of the Sahara. We, as Egyptians, are being called intruders and invaders in our own culture. This has been going on systematically. I don't want to wake up one day and find the Museum of the African American Culture and History claiming the stolen Egyptian artifacts in the in the British Museum to be theirs. And, and now I'm hearing that Zendaya, the, the very. Are you interested in debating Israel Palestine or Islam against Mohammed Hijab? If you want to do Israel Palestine, maybe, but I'm not fucking not religion. Fuck no. Popular actor who I would love her to play it, but the, Zendaya ethnically is is half Nigerian, half German, and now she's going to play. Where are the where are the Egyptian actors? Where are okay. the where are the Arab actors? Who's supposed and I think is that even like historically I also I will also say this this is really confusing and this isn't America's fault fuck you guys this is the rest of the world's fault the mixture of using ethnic terms and nationality terms as the same words is very f confusing and f everybody that did this and then for Jews and religious double triple f them okay um because like if you say a Chinese person, like Chinese isn't like from the country of China, like Chinese citizenship or Chinese, like ethnically Chinese or like that shit is very, very, very confusing. Because uh, like what is an Egyptian, right? Egyptian, there's not. Is there an is there a singular Egyptian ethnicity? Like, is there an Egyptian ethnicity or is it considered like some broader Mediterranean descendants of Canaanite, some other bullshit? Like, I don't even know what the. I don't actually even know if there's like a. Oh, um, I don't even know. I don't even know. Fuck all you guys. Wise, you see in the in, in the in the trailer, it's like I don't care what what, you're, what they told you, but Cleopatra was like, who's that woman? Why is African American people are telling my own history? She Do you have any experience with antidepressants to help with ADHD? Well, butrin, for example. No, I've never done SSRIs or anything like that before. Sometimes people will, when you have ADHD or if they think you have ADHD, um, things that run concurrently with this or instead of that can be anxiety or depression. So sometimes they'll prescribe you something to treat those before doing ADHD treatment. I'm not entirely sure why, but. Is, there, there's all of these pseudoscience and pseudo history has been going on and it has implications. Ethnicity is just what you say. That's why you can be black and white Cuban. Um, I mean, I think different people disagree on what ethnicity means. I think we had that debate on stream before. Somebody said that if you're white, you move to China and you move with a fellow white person to China and you speak the language and you integrate into the culture and the next generation you have like kids or whatever, that you could consider those kids ethnically Chinese because they felt like the ethnic part was almost completely divorced from like any racial or genetic component. And then I think in Canada, I think they use ethnicity and racially and race, race, like the opposite that we do. I don't know if there's any consensus on any of this shit. And then even drawing these boundaries is like really fucking difficult too. So I don't, I don't know. This, it's, it's complicated. We, we, these issues started cropping up when we were looking at like what is the Palestinian ethnic identity as well, right? Yeah. Egyptians are Arabs, same as Syrian, Jordanians, etc. Um, yeah, but even like there, there, there are subtle genetic like GWAS differences between, very subtle, but there are differences between Syrians, Jordanians, and Palestinians, although they're very subtle. I think it's a greater difference with Egyptians. But I think Egypt, there was also the fact too that I think in the Ottoman Empire, there was a lot of movement within the Ottoman Empire of different groups of people as well. So people would like come and go to different, I don't know, it's, fucking, it's all complicated. The, the issue, hold on. The issue with all of this, the reason why this conversation is so difficult is that people are staking current worth and value on their histories. And it's very, very, very difficult to have an, an, an unemotional or dispassionate or an objective discussion about race and ethnicity in, in history 
because everybody has a lot at stake in these conversations. It's like the exact opposite of the piece of advice I give, where I say like, oh, like if you're arguing a point, make sure that you're not emotionally attached to the point or you don't see it as part of your character because it's harder to move off a bad argument, right? Like if information comes out and that Daisy chick was actually completely trapped by Walter, right? I don't wanna be like, oh God, I'm never gonna change my mind. I say, okay, yeah, I, you know, I had shit properly. It's not like a huge part of who I am. Like, yeah, I can change my mind on this, that's fine. When things become super ingrained into your identity, it becomes very hard to change your mind, even if you end up being completely wrong. And that's the scary part about a lot of this historical revision or you can even say to some extent a lot of the Afrocentrism is in order to, to, to gather current value, like current normative value for who you are or a group of people, you do that by rooting it in these historical claims. And now these historical claims become battlegrounds for a people's current self-worth. And that's a dangerous and scary area to be in. Yeah. Is, is half Nigerian, half German, and now she's going to play. Where are the where are the Egyptian actors? Where okay. are the where are the Arab actors who supposed it? And the thing is, that even like historically wise, you see in the in, in the in the trailer, it's like I don't care what what, you're, what they told you, but Cleopatra was black. Who's that woman? Why is African American people are telling my own history? She is there. There's all of these pseudo science and pseudo history has been going on, and it has implications. No, I am sorry. African people from West Africa did not build the pyramids. Okay. Cleopatra did not like like that, and it, 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 also Jewish people do not build the pyramids. Okay. It is time for Hollywood to listen to the people who own that history. So well, you made that. You've one, 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 one more thing. I'm going to say one more thing. Egypt, Egypt, Egypt had 30 dynasties over 2,700 years. We had kings and queens from the kingdom of Kush, the, from Nubia, from Libya. This area had, all, had bled into each other and expanded and shrunk into each other. I understand exactly what I mean when we I say that. We don't get like any of this guy's response? You got you clocked both made your, in this clip. Like, yeah, it's an interesting debate. Thank you both very much indeed. I feel like that guy talked one time. Damn. You want some real ethnic slash national slash race confusion? Dive into Brazilian demographics. And Dusty, if you were born and raised in America, you're American. This whole ethnicity shit is cringe. Yeah, but I don't, but I think generally people would say America is a national identity. Same thing with Cuban, right? My Cuban descent, it's, that's really a national identity. It's not really an ethnic one. Um, Cause Cuba is just a country. There's, I don't think there's like a Cuban ethnicity. Same thing with Mexico. Like you can have Mexicans, but I think generally Mexico is a nationalistic identity. But we, in America, we mix all of these terms up probably because we don't have a common ethnic background. Cause we're a nation of immigrants. So much as that triggers some people. God, I feel like every time I say that, there's like some conservative that's, like, whose eyes are bleeding. Because <laughs> he's so f***ing mad I said it. The Jew guy linked this in chat. What is this? He's also trying to destroy the government in Israel simultaneously and take out Benjamin Netanyahu. There's a piece in JNS by Carolyn Glick. The war rages in the Gaza Strip, northern Israel, Lebanon, Elat, and on the streets of Israel, cities... As Iran's Palestinian, Lebanese, Syrian, Iraqi, and Yemeni proxies maintain and escalate their operations against the Jewish state. Unmoved by this state of affairs, Israel's far left is reinstating the anti-government riots that occurred regularly for the first three quarters of 2023. She goes on later to be sure there are a number of reasons this is happening, but perhaps the main one was revealed on March 17 by riot leader, the head rioter, Ami Dror, in a WhatsApp group chat with his colleagues. The communication, which Dora authenticated in an interview with Channel 14, was reported on X Twitter by a poster who operates under the handle Arabello Tuna Hunter. Stick with me. In that communication, Dora, the head writer, told his colleagues that the White House was asking them to reinstate the riots. Based on what he referred to as a conversation with his contacts in the White House, Dora set out in granular detail the White House's four-part plan to overthrow the Netanyahu government. The components involved actions on the ground in Gaza, the use of the UN Security Council, extortion of government ministers in the Netanyahu government, and mass protests. Dror called his report an important update from the- Yeah, I don't think this is happening. The American- <laughs> But, okay. 